Here are two fictional time machines, but time travel is not just fiction. Nearly all physicists agree that one type of time travel is possible, namely one-way travel to the future. This type of time travel occurs based on so-called time dilation, which is part of Einstein's relativity. Time dilation basically says moving clocks run slow, where clocks include all measures of time. Time dilation does have practical significance, because the whole GPS system would fail if we ignored it. That's because the GPS system requires us to know satellite positions with high accuracy, and that requires us to measure time very accurately. The Kelly twins are a nice example of time dilation and time travel to the future. Former NASA astronaut Scott Kelly's one-year-long mission on the International Space Station made his identical twin Mark an older brother. Scott had literally traveled into his own future by about 5 milliseconds because of time dilation. A paradox is sometimes raised about the reality of time dilation. This so-called twin paradox argues that no difference between the twins will occur, since each one can claim he was the one at rest, and it was the other who was the moving one. Despite the twin paradox, there really is a time difference between the twins, who are not in a symmetrical situation. The twin who spends more time in orbit really does age less. While the time difference was very tiny for the Kelly twins, that would not be the case for speeds that are a significant fraction of the speed of light. Let's imagine a trip in a spaceship at a speed 99.99995% the speed of light to visit Kepler 438b, a planet that is a twin of Earth. Kepler is 500 light years from Earth, so the round trip distance is 1,000 light years. The round trip journey obviously would take 1,000 years or 10 centuries according to us Earthlings. But that is not true for ship occupants. For ship occupants only one single year would elapse during the trip due to time dilation. So, if the ship departed in 2023, on their return to Earth, the one-year-older ship occupants would be returning in the year 3023. If they did not like what they found, there would be no returning to their departure date. Here is a simple way to understand why time dilation occurs in relativity, namely everything always moves through spacetime at the speed of light. Normally, when we refer to movement it is movement through space. But let's consider movement through both space and time. The horizontal axis shows speed through space and the vertical shows speed through time, and the radius of the circle is the speed of light, c. The arrow a represents an object that is stationary in space, and it moves through time at the speed of light. Arrow b would represent an object moving through both space and time. But, its speed through space is much less than light, and so it moves through time at only a slightly reduced speed, so it has very little time dilation. Arrow C represents an object with equal speed through space and time, and it moves at a speed of about 71% light speed through each dimension. Finally, arrow D corresponds to an object moving through space at the speed of light, and it has no speed through time, meaning time is at a standstill. Thus, if you could hop aboard a photon of light, you'd go through the entire universe in no time at all, and if magically you could exceed light speed, you could go back in time. The flow of time from past to future has been compared to the flow of a river. So, going back in time is like having water spontaneously flowing uphill. The artist M. C. Escher has several works related to relativity and time. One of his most famous works is this impossible waterfall where the water seems magically to circulate continuously without the need for any pump. The flow seems locally always to flow downhill, but it must flow uphill at some time to get back to its original height. A similar impossible structure drawn by Escher is known as the Penrose Staircase. Again, it forms a closed loop, and yet impossibly always seems to go downstairs. This effect appears even more dramatic when we see a person continually falling down the stairs in a closed loop, but never reaching any bottom. What do these two illustrations have to do with time? We experience time, just like a flowing river is always flowing in one direction. But if time somehow could be distorted or curved to form a loop, this might offer a way to travel to the past. According to general relativity the rate of passage of time is affected by gravity. In fact, Einstein assumed that gravity is not a force as we normally view it, but rather a distortion of spacetime due to the presence of matter. This distortion creates the possibility of forming closed loops in time. 
you can think of spacetime as being like a rubber sheet, and the presence of any massive object deforms the sheet, causing a depression. It is this depression that is then responsible for the elliptical orbit of a satellite, rather than some force. General relativity, in fact, predicted the existence of black holes, which are distortions of spacetime so extreme that matter is compressed down to an infinitely tiny point, known as a singularity. Contrary to popular belief about black holes swallowing up all matter in their vicinity, you could safely orbit one, as long as you stayed outside a distance known as the event horizon. Black holes are abundant in our galaxy, probably numbering around 100 million, although to date only about a dozen have been identified. The basis of the 100 million estimate is that one out of every thousand stars is massive enough to become a black hole when they exhaust their fuel supply. Black holes could offer an alternative way to travel to the future. Suppose your spaceship were to orbit one, staying just outside the black hole event horizon. Given the strong gravity there, time would pass much more slowly aboard the ship than back on Earth, since right at the event horizon time effectively stops. By completing enough orbits, you could therefore travel to the distant future. Einstein's general relativity also is consistent with a much more exotic creature than black holes namely the wormhole, which can be thought of as a black hole and white hole joined together by a bridge or tunnel. A white hole, of course, is just the opposite of a black hole. It is a region of spacetime that you can leave but not enter. The entry mouth to the wormhole must obviously be on the black hole side of the wormhole, and the exit mouth is on the white hole side. The tunnel between them is a shortcut connecting places or times that are widely separated. The closed loop shown allows time travel to the past when the ship passes through the tunnel. You would not want to enter a wormhole unless you knew it were stable for a long enough time for you to make a safe passage. But do stable wormholes really exist? One way to form a wormhole is to bring a black hole and a white hole near each other and allowing a bridge or tunnel connecting them to form spontaneously. Unfortunately, as physicist John Wheeler first showed, these connecting tunnels would collapse as soon as they were formed. This suggests that stable wormholes do not exist. On the other hand, a tunnel might be kept open with the presence of matter with negative mass, but we don't know if negative mass matter exists. Also don't forget we don't know if white holes exist either. The simplest way to prove stable wormholes can exist would be to find one. But where and how should we look for one? The massive object at the center of our galaxy is believed to be a black hole whose mass is about 3 million suns. But some physicists have suggested that the object really is a wormhole rather than a black hole. This is not a ridiculous suggestion since the two objects would not appear to be very different. One way to tell would be based on the orbits of nearby stars, which would be slightly different in the two cases. Another difference is that no light can escape from the central part of a black hole but you might see through wormhole tunnels depending on their orientation. You might observe stars on the other side of the wormhole, but certainly no worm. The blurry donut-like image of the object at the galactic center is not good enough to tell whether we are seeing a black hole or a wormhole. If it is a wormhole, its 26,000 light-years distance from Earth would not allow us to use it for time travel. But there is one more problem with using wormholes to travel to the past. When we earlier considered the case of one-way time travel to the future it was easy to specify exactly how far into the future you wanted to travel. If you want to go further into the future just increase your spaceship speed or travel to a more distant planet. But for time travel to the past using a wormhole, finding your destination would be much trickier. A wormhole certainly would not have signs indicating various destination times. You might find yourself continually changing your path through the wormhole seeking out the right place and time to exit it by trial and error. Even worse, you might find you were in the wrong wormhole to go where you wanted to go. On the other hand, there is an alternative to wormholes that could allow you to specify an exact departure and destination date, namely the Tipler cylinder. Frank Tipler showed in 1974 that a rapidly spinning massive cylinder could deform spacetime to produce time loops. Someone traveling around the cylinder in the direction of its spin would go back in time, by an amount that would depend on the number of loops traveled. But the cylinder would need to have truly extraordinary properties. It would need to be at least 100 kilometers long, 
have a mass at least 3 million Earths, and be spun at a few billion RPM. Finally, negative mass material would need to be placed near the ends of the cylinder to keep it from collapsing into a black hole due to its own gravity. If negative mass exists, and if superintelligent aliens ever build a time machine, they may find it far easier to make one using a wormhole. If time travel exists, there should be some evidence for time travelers on one of the innumerable video cameras that are part of our life today. These few seconds of video were claimed to be evidence of one such time traveler. The man on the right crossing the street somehow knows to stick out his arm at just the right moment. Without this intervention the girl on the bike surely would have been struck by the speeding car. How could the guy have known to stick out his arm unless he was a real time traveler? With a few viewings you'll see the guy very briefly glances to his right to see the speeding car before reaching the girl. Oh well, we'll have to keep looking. Maybe the best evidence of a time traveler would not be a video, but rather someone making a prediction of a very specific event that would be considered utterly impossible at the time the prediction was made. Of course, such fantastical events might not really indicate the reality of time travelers, but instead the weirdness of the universe we live in and our inability to imagine the limits of the possible. The most famous time travel paradox involves your going back in time, killing your grandpa as a baby, and preventing your own birth. That means you never could have gone back and done the dastardly deed, and so grandpa does not die. So, did he live or did he die? This absurd situation leads some people to say that time travel to the past is impossible. But there are several solutions to the paradox. The simplest one is that the past cannot be altered, and nothing you do when you try to kill grandpa works. A second possibility, a favorite of many time travel movies, is the many worlds idea. In other words, any changes you make to the past affect the present, leading to a new timeline. Aside from grandpa, who did not deserve to meet an untimely death at the hands of a time traveler, one historical figure who did, was Adolf Hitler. Indeed, Hitler is the most often cited target of would-be time travelers. Given that there were as many as 42 known plots on Hitler's life, does that not suggest maybe some were by time travelers? Given their lack of success in killing Hitler, a future time travel organization might want to consider a more subtle approach to neutralizing the dictator. It is well known that he was a failed artist before he was a monster. Hitler confessed in his autobiography to being devastated when he failed the exam to the Vienna School of Fine Arts. Maybe the time travel organization could simply send someone back to bribe the art school admissions director. If this intervention were successful, Hitler might have fulfilled his artistic dreams, and today he would appear in a few Austrian history books as simply an obscure artist. Some of this video relates to my book Hunting the Faster Than Light Tachyon. In it we have considered the possibility of time travel, which is a reality for one-way travel to the future. Trips to the past are much less certain. But what about sending messages, not people, back in time? This might be possible if faster-than-light particles known as tachyons exist, which is the main topic of my book. The book does not require you have studied any physics, but that probably couldn't hurt, unless you had a really bad teacher. The book is in effect, a scientific detective story, and a personal memoir. If you are interested in tachyons and time travel, you also might want to check out my amusing website as well as my video, Tachyons, Messengers from the Future. I'm sure this will sound nuts, but in the video I discuss my own possible message from the future.